We have a $100 anonymous donation. It says, hey everyone, thank you so much for helping me procrastinate with entertaining runs for a good cause. My finals start the day after tomorrow and I'm not getting anything done in these last few hours I got. You guys continue to do your awesome work. All the best from Switzerland. We have a $50 donation from Sebastian. Been watching your marathons for quite some time now, but first time donating. All of you are so awesome for doing this. Thanks. Thank you, Sebastian. How about we get a roll call on the couch? Mm -hmm. Scott J. Brogan. Jimmy Barber. Mike Richter. And Zellerbaum. So the exact totals were um, speed run had $390 and high school run had $1,801. <laughs> yeah. yeah! Yeah! Excellent. High score is a really interesting um, yeah. category. Correct. Sure. You're, hopefully this should be a good show. Um, you can start time whenever. I mean, there's the score run, dude. So, <laughs> yeah. So, the way scoring works in this game is <clears throat> you have, let's say there's a group of two enemies in front of you. You can kill them with either charges, lasers, or bombs. If you kill them with lasers or bombs, you're going to get two points. You know, two ships, two points, nothing special. But if you kill them with a charge shot, particularly a locked one, you're going to get the two points for the physical ships and a hit plus one. The hit plus one is the bonus point, and that's determined by the charge shot that you shoot. So the charge shot directly impacts one of the, one of the enemies, and the splash kills the other one. And the splash is what determines everything. So, the way you want to go about this optimally is intentionally miss with charge shots. And that's easier said than done. So, right away, you might notice that my lock-ons are not locking on. The reason for that is I'm holding R and Z, and when you hold R and Z, the, uh, the charge does not actually lock on to anything. I'm also making the... Uh, oh, I think I got it. It's alright. <laughs> Thanks, Slippy. So right now I'm using the terrain to my advantage. I'm going to be doing that a lot. Also, the charge will detonate by itself when it reaches a certain distance. And that's going to be particularly useful in stages where there's not very much terrain, particularly sector Y. And that's going to be next. So, I'm going through a bunch of arches on the sides to spawn more enemies. And that will... There's just so many enemies <laughs> when you do that. And the base... You might notice I got a bunch of hit plus ones off of the, the, uh, the mechs after it was dead. The uh, mechs are actually still flagged as enemies, despite being dead. So I can get hit plus ones off of them pretty much while I'm on the screen. So, just for reference, the medal for this stage is 150, and that's like the <laughs> ultimate goal that you want, and I almost have it, and I barely reached the checkpoint. I'll take this. Get the one behind me. Something's 
You can have one charge shot on the screen at once. So you need to be really mindful of that. That's good. I guess I should be thankful. So I'm kind of indecisive, so I want both of these items. <laughs> So why are we not playing on expert mode, Salad? Um, that's because I'm going to do really risky strats later on that you're going to see, particularly in Area 6. I'm going to be pretty much crashing through a bunch of stuff while getting a bunch of points. Um, we'll get to that later, though. So I'm going to be going to Sector Y. And you need, to do that, you need to go through these seven arches and have Falco alive. So, there's going to be a fork coming up right here. I'm going to get enemies on both sides with a lock bomb. I'm going to boost over here so that the enemies on the other side spawn. So, I'm getting like pretty much all the points on both sides. Also, there are these like guys underground. Um, you can get the plus ones off of them frequently when they're underground. When they go up, then you can kill them. You can get two points that way. Not bad. So I almost got double the metal. Um, so there's not too much to this boss, just shoot it, I guess. An interesting thing in um, the speedrunning areas of this game is when you're entering this particular boss's area, what you want to normally want to do is you want to enter C up, which is your cockpit mode, and you want to move your um, R wing all the way to the corner of the screen. This reduces lag and saves you a little bit of time, and you also want to do that when you exit the boss as well. Sector Y is, it's a really challenging stage to optimize because there are a lot of groups um, located in space. Basically, you need the charges to detonate around them, so you have to be really good at the, you know, the charge distance, I guess. Call it. Um, there are actually a lot of groups where you need to have, you need to have the charge to kill them because you can't kill them with lasers or, uh, well, Actually, you could kill the bombs, but it's not optimal. Because you only get... There's going to be, like, little white missiles, basically. The missiles are really difficult to hit, unless you use charges. And bombs, I guess. We have a $20 donation from Xavier, a.k.a. Mr. MV. We are back, not without technical difficulties, but glad that the French and German kept giving no matter what. Great job, guys. So you'll notice sometimes I get points off of the death animation of certain enemies, uh, particularly these mechs. You can get pretty much points off of them as long as they're, you know, dying. You're going to see that in Aquas too. I'm going to do a somersault here because there are actually a bunch of missiles on the left and right of this ship. So I want to get them with charges. I got that one. That one's really hard to get because you can't see anything over there. So if I weren't going an expert, or if I were using expert mode, that would be really costly. But For those who don't know, I'm in expert mode. 
if you crash into something with your R wing, you immediately lose your wings. And that's very, very dangerous because that puts you down at single lasers. Um, that's, and it's not really optimal for killing bosses fast and for the most part just getting as many points as you can. Even though for the most part you do use charge shots, um, it still, however, is very, very costly. So yeah, I got well over the metal when I just reached the halfway mark. That, that's going to happen pretty much in a lot of stages. We have a Tilted Dollar donation from Delius. Both my grandfathers have survived prostate cancer. Thanks all of you for helping others with this cause. Let's get the Borderland to you guys all dressed up. So you may have noticed that uh, my charges were going at a really weird angle. That's because the stage is scrolling in a really strange way. Um, your lasers actually go straight forward, but your charges go at this really weird downward angle, and it makes it really difficult to shoot. So I'm going to try to kill this boss fast. I actually have an extra bomb. Um, so I'm going to kill these two robots. Uh, they're pretty easy. There's, a, uh, there's another robot that comes later that I'd like to shoot a bomb at him, such that the bomb is in his, uh, his hitbox, basically. It, like he, if he's drifting through it, then it deals like max damage. So ideally, I'd like that to happen. Got it. So I might as well start talking about Aquas now because there's a lot to talk about with that stage. So Aquas here in the Blue Marine. The Blue Marine is a submarine vehicle that has torpedoes instead of charges and bombs. Torpedoes have a different style to them, I guess. You don't have to hold A to charge uh, your torpedoes at all like you would with charge shots, but they still have the same properties as charge shots, so I can use them in the same way that I've been using charge shots before. The advantage is I only have to use one button to do that now. So there's going to be a lot of really unusual point gaining strats in this stage. Yeah. For what? No. <laughs> so basically, if you mash really fast, you uh, you get a lot more points. You'll see why. This is real dark. I'm gonna check out the bioweapon. This is a incredibly difficult stage to see on certain TVs. This isn't too bad, though. Okay. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> the way that works is that that clam has an enemy inside it, and Pretty much it's death animation, similar to the mechs in the previous stage. You can get points off of it. You won't get points off of it 
from this coin because it has an item in it, and also empty clams don't do that either. So it's only clams that have enemies in them. <coughs> Sometimes fish will block your way, and they'll give you an extra coin every once in a while, but it's really rare. Random based. Yes, that's, that was really good. So you can clip through that rock in two different ways, the front and the back. The back one was found by a guy named uh, Bros1987, I believe, so shout out to Bros. Alright, so pillars, there are two types of pillars in this stage, destructible and indestructible. Destructible ones have the same properties as max, so I can do this. <laughs> so the reason uh, that works is the entire object is flagged as an enemy, including the base of it. <laughs> Nice, I clipped through the base. That's really hard to do. If you can do that, you can actually get a lot more points that way. It's really tough to do it on every single one of them, though. So that squid has a lot of hit points, so I just did that until the splash killed him. The sea oh yeah, by the way, the seaweed, you may have noticed I'm shooting the seaweed at a very particular uh, at very particular spots. That's because the seaweed has no like collision detection, so you can't crash into it. But it seems to stop your shots anyway, so it's incredibly useful for score. We do that on uh fish at fast by too, but it's kinda of random. Yeah. You're the fifth, Flippy. Thanks, Peppy. This thing will never hold again. There we go. That second point's pretty tough to get. So I'm actually not getting points off the jellyfish, if you're wondering that. Um, I just use it as an object, basically, so that the splash will uh, hurt the jellyfish. For every time the splash hurts the jelly, or the splash hurts the uh, starfish, you get points. So I go through that arch on the right because it spawns a bunch of enemies over there and they're going to home into me. So I'm going to get a bunch of points off of this one. Right. So this clam is, uh, I don't know. You can get 12 points off of the three, uh, I guess you'd call them barnacles, on the top. They're worth uh, four points each. I wanted to do that before I blow up the, uh, the pillars, the muscle pillars on the clam. Because otherwise then I get rid of them. Fire a 
So you constantly have to play this game where you have to shoot the pearls out of the way. It can be really challenging sometimes because it'll just constantly spew them out randomly. So the next stage is Zonus. And the main thing about Zonus is the searchlights. So there are a bunch of searchlights that you're supposed to shoot down to go to Sector Z, but considering this is a score, uh, score run, I don't really want to go to Sector Z. Sector Z is a pretty terrible stage in a lot of aspects, especially score. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get caught by one of the lights intentionally. And the reason for that is the stage retaliates by sending a bunch of extra boats your way, and that's worth a lot of points. However, I can't get caught like by the first light because the lights are actually worth more points if you're not caught. So there's a very particular light you want to get caught by. Just a reminder, uh, X-Men Mutant Apocalypse is the bonus game for today, and it is only $61 away from meeting, meeting its goal. Nice. The uh, route for the points run used to be uh, quite different. That's right. The points run used to be Corneria, Medio, Katina, Sector X. Um, Macbeth Area 6 Venom, and typically it was played on main game. Another distinction is I'm a, I'm doing this like single segment sort of. A lot of score runners do uh, basically individual levels, and they perfect everything. Like they never miss anything or any shots. I hear you. And they're highly, highly optimized. We have a $50 donation from Naomi Uyama. She says, I'm proud of you, Mike. Good luck with the rest of the marathon. Your sis, Naomi. Ideally, what I want to do is I want to charge shot these lights before Cat actually shoots them. And you get one point every time you successfully do it. I missed that one, but there's actually like three of them that are incredibly difficult later on. We have a $2,000 donation from Raphael. Wow. The entire Germensch community thanks all the organizers of AGDQ. You do an amazing job. The French community thanks all the organizers for the French Restream, and also special thanks to the German Restream that has hosted us during our problem. Keep up the good work. 
Guys, you are great and now feel the French Romel. So if you guys didn't catch it earlier, um, he did miss the searchlight here, which does spawn more enemies, like we said earlier, which really helps out in the long run for like an optimal amount of points for this level. Uh, as you can see, he's already gotten the metal for this area, um, and it's just going to keep going up. Zonus is one of the very few areas where it's very, very easy to get a very, very high score here. One other thing about... Uh Getting medals. So if you uh, lose one of your teammates at all on any stage, uh, you don't get the medal for that stage. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they don't come back on the next stage either. So that's two stages you can lose a medal on the stage. Crash or whatever happens. No, <laughs> that doesn't happen. Um, for those interested in, in speedrunning this game, um, in the any percent category of this game, we do kill Slippy. So, yes, we kill Slippy in any percent. So, you guys, you guys want to kill Slippy on this game. And if you guys really like uh, Star Fox, make sure you guys follow Zolid 1. He is really good. We have a $20 donation from James. Can't let you do that, Cancer. SDA has ordered us to take you down. Thank you, James. An interesting part about this boss is if you if you boost into this area and then go into cockpit mode and look away from the screen, you can potentially soft lock here. Um, we won't be doing it, uh, obviously, but <laughs> you can soft lock. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I think you missed. So, what I could do here is I could shoot the middle section, which actually kills both of the, the pipes in two bombs instead, except for the four. And if I shoot a bomb here and break and go to the top of the screen, I kill it in one shot instead of like three or so. I'm gonna get a couple bombs. This is like the easiest place to get some bombs. Stages like this, especially where you get a really high score, check out how many lives I get. I should be getting uh, a lot. <laughs> so it's, it gives you one life per 100. So if I wanted to retry this course, I could totally do that. I could just press start, down, A, and I'd be, you know, going into Zonus again. So you could kind of segment it. You could segment this run by uh, not only by planet, but by checkpoint because. If you cross the checkpoint with a certain score and then kill yourself after, so you, you go back to the checkpoint with that score. So that's another thing. Um, so in Macbeth, uh, I'm a landmaster, and there are a couple of gameplay differences. <laughs> other than, you know, the obvious you can't fly. But I can't unlock my charges with RNC anymore because that's actually the combination for hover. So what I gotta do is I gotta fire my charges really fast before they lock on to anything. So I'm gonna hit this pole a couple of times because the train throws these uh, rocks out. It gives me a little bit more time to get points off of them. I actually throw those rocks in random spots too. So yeah, they're, the patterns are totally random. You can get anywhere from like one to five points for all of those little uh, 
turrets on the tracks, like the one on uh, this one. If you see a hit plus two on there, that means I got the full five. So coming up, I'm going to go up a slope, but the camera's not going to really know what to do. So it's going to orient itself in a really strange way such that I can fire charges at the slope. Like it's a series of walls now. I'm not sure why that is, but it's really helpful because I get all these points off these rocks now. Okay, cool. I got on the tracks. So what that does is Slippy gets chased by extra enemies that you usually don't see unless you get up there. It's really difficult to get up there, by the way. Uh-oh. Good thing I have a bunch of bombs. <laughs> I'm gonna hit this uh, wall a little bit just because I want extra space from the train. It's gonna go ahead and shoot a bunch of rocks off of a cliff. And uh, I'm gonna get a bunch of points off of those too. As long as I can kill the gas tank on the train, I can get like all the points. That bomb wasn't close enough to that uh, little tray to get the extra point. It's fine though. It's a pretty good checkpoint regardless. We have a $20 donation from DSX. First time watching the marathon live and I'm loving every minute. This is my third donation so far, Star Fox Hyped. Shout outs to Scott J Program and Zallard One. Everyone should give them a follow. You guys are awesome. I will donate $100 if Zallard gets 700 hits on Area 6. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, based DSX. Thanks, DSX. I don't think that's gonna happen, but I've been trying really hard. Shout out to DSX. Make sure you guys all follow him. He currently has the world record for any percent in this category, in this game rather. So if you guys want to see someone kill Slippy as fast as humanly possible, <laughs> which you all should, I mean, why wouldn't you? Uh, go watch DSX Challenger. Great guy. Okay, just want to make a quick announcement. Uh, the X-Men Mutant Apocalypse uh, bonus game has been met, so it's going to be right after the Super... Meat Boy Race and right uh, before uh, Donkey Kong 64. Nice. So this boss, uh, if you hit the eight switches, you can uh, pretty much run the train into its own base. Which um, gives you a hit plus 50. Yeah, a hit plus 50, which that by itself isn't really great, but going to area six is. You can actually technically get more points if you uh, if you don't hit the switches because all the enemies actually count while you're fighting the boss, and there's actually a reason for that because if you go too far, there there are these markers throughout the stage when the, you're fighting the boss, 100 to 500. Shortly after you reach 500, there's a giant building. If you approach it, then the boss says like time to end this, and then he like kamikazes into your ship with the greatest accuracy and instantly kills you. What's even more interesting is if uh, you have the uh, uh, a Game Shark cheat on where you have like infinite health, what it does then is it's so accurate at tracking you, it hits you 
scoops you up, and then it bounces you all the way up until the game crashes. <laughs> it's actually damaging you every frame. Too. Yeah, it like it it does so much damage that like it's staggering from like full to dead like a lot, really fast. So yeah, uh, the next stage is area six, and. I'm probably not going to talk too much of, um, through it because it's it's pretty uh, it, it's got enemies everywhere. Um, it's got the highest metal in the game, which is 300. Typically, the metal has been about 150, uh, the exception being Zonus, which was 250. Um, but this is 300, and on average, I've been getting like double the metal. So. Hopefully so we have a $25 dollar donation from Matthew. I will double this if Zallard gets 650 on Area 6. I will triple this if Zallard gets 600 or 700 hits on Area 6. <laughs> All right. No pressure, All right. So Area 6 is one of the most interesting areas for score in this game. Um, it's by far one of the coolest areas for score, and uh, you guys are going to see some really cool tricks uh, here as well. So as you can see, he's not even like, what, 20 seconds in the level and he's already broken 100 hits? <laughs> they probably won't see the hit counter stop going up. Yeah. yeah. We have a $20 donation from DJ Foreclosure. Couldn't help giving my first donation during the Star Fox 64 run because my friends and family and I literally know this entire script by heart. Classic literature at its finest. <laughs> He doesn't answer the call from Rob there because he, he'll uh, assist you on some of these, uh, these ships and he shoots them and you don't get points for them. Yeah, Rob's not very good at killing enemies. <laughs> we have a $20 donation from Seth R. Thank you so much for doing this. The runs are great and the, the cause is greater. Keep up the good work. We have a $20 anonymous donation. Hello, everyone. Just wanted to thank you all for the wonderful runs for a great cause. Huge shout out to everyone that made this charity marathon a giant success, including the viewers who advertised it to their friends. We have a $20 donation from Wild Conjecture. Put this towards the secret. Slippy is actually Andros ending. <laughs> we just got to the checkpoint. It's already way over the metal. We have an anonymous $150 donation. Greetings all. Great to finally watch AG AGDQ live. I've watched all the VODs for the previous AGDQ and SG SGDQ, but never had a chance to donate live. Best wishes to all the runners. I say kill all the animals.
We have a $20 donation from Ryan. My family has been hurt by cancer, so here's $20 to help hurt cancer. Love AGDQ and the runners involved for supporting a great cause while crushing some of my favorite games growing up. Cheers. <laughs> So I didn't quite get to 700, but I think that'll do. Yeah. So the weird thing about this boss is ideally you want to one cycle these things, but it's really, really finicky to get this consistently. Um, sometimes when you're attacking the tentacles, when you go to attack the third one or even the second one, the hitbox will just go nope, and you'll just stop attacking it, and you, the hitbox won't register that you're like shooting at it. And so then you'll have to do a two cycle or possibly sometimes a three cycle. What seems to happen is there seems to be like a timer when you kill the first one that starts and it's a really short one. Um, so you need to kill the other two really fast after you kill the first one. Like that. The next stage, I can actually get a couple more points off of Star Wolf by shooting charge shots at him, but this is like the only spot in the run where it feels like you're farming points. So I think to make a compromise and, you know, for the consideration of the schedule, I'm going to switch sort of to speedrun mode and just kill them fast. So, yeah. Star Wolf can be really random. They could do t one of two things if you attempt, oh well, actually three, uh, if you attempt to shoot at them. They can either do a somersault, a U-turn, or just roll. So hopefully I want them to just barrel roll like constantly. Someone started rolling, so they're dead. <laughs> There you are. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah, please don't stop. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay, good. So if you're at the worst spot possible, um, there's there's a couple of spots if you end that uh, fight on where Fox will just constantly circle around the dome forever and the game's over. I really <laughs> didn't want that to happen though. Sometimes you kind of just don't have any control over it. Yes. It's actually, you can actually get a higher score on the easy route, believe it or not. He's going to do a really interesting quick kill um, after this phase um, involving the bomb and a somersault. I just like doing that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So 
So if you shoot the brain like five or so times, then uh, it wants to teleport behind you. So he's, he's got like one or two hit points left or something. Something silly, yeah. <laughs> So we died. I'm sorry. It runs over. Don't ever give up, my friend. Maybe not. Father? <laughs> so you can get over 227 for this stage, but I don't know. I think that was that was fitting for this being a speedrun marathon and whatnot. So. You're following uh, James out, but you can't actually shoot him down. People have tried, and it just can't be done. Um, I don't know, he just, maybe a ghost or something, I don't know. Too spooky. So yeah, that was uh, that was high score. I hope uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's kind of strange to do a score run at a speedrunning marathon, but I don't know. Hopefully, it was entertaining. Definitely was. So there are a couple of people I want to thank. Um, the history behind the scoring community is kind of interesting. Like, so as I mentioned earlier, you can uh, or the score was different. Actually, you mentioned it, right? Yeah. It was a different route. So the reason why it changed is because there was a Japanese scoring community for this game, but they kind of didn't communicate with the English com uh, community. So. I, uh, I started scoring this game and then I was wondering like why no one, you know, looked into it. So I went to their forum and uh, I asked them, but I asked them in English and it's a Japanese forum. So the first like response was just ha 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 is the foreigner. And then after like several posts like that, then there was a tasser by the name of Nangasan who made a task of Aquas. Aquas was the stage that really didn't look right to us because we didn't like we didn't know anything about the clams or the pillars the record without knowing that was like 280 or so um, but that completely opened us up to the newer strats so shout outs to Nangasan and then the Japanese community also I want to thank all the uh, all the people that I learned stuff from from this game um, I might butcher the pronunciation of these names, so sorry if I do. Uh, Dimitri Jarwa, he is uh, one of the first guys I saw run this. Uh, he's a really good German player. And uh, Winfred Mertes is also another really good one. Uh, he's actually, the, he's the first one I saw do the trick in Corneria where I got both the items. Um, Bros, he, he, was a, he was a good score runner too. Um, it's really good that he found that uh, easier way to clip through that rock. It's really helpful. Um, Stephen Brown is also another really good score runner. He, uh, he's actually known as uh, Ingex24. Some of you may know him by chance. Uh, he actually he did some runs of uh, Zelda, I think. A couple Zelda games. I can't recall which ones, though. Um, and then there's uh, Thomas Potter. He's a really, really good runner from the UK. Um, he has the record on Aquas right now. And the record is like 450 something, which is insane. You have to have like really precise breaking and positioning and mashing. Like you have to have it all to get a score like that. And there's also uh, the Brazilian players. Um, 
Alan Mathias is a really good player. He has the record in Corneria. It's, I believe it's in the 370s, if I'm not mistaken, which he's the only one who's gotten a score that high in that stage. And uh, there's actually a new score runner by the name of Kyle Nintendo 2. He's, he's a really good runner. He found a bunch of new strats, actually, in a couple of spots. He found one, uh, well, he more refined another one for bowls. You can uh, start a chain reaction on bowls that um, there's like a, a central point where enemies spawn from and if you kill an enemy with a bomb, this is my guess as to what's going on, but I think it starts a chain reaction where the, the dead ship hits the, the new ship that spawns and it keeps like doing that over and over and over again until you get a ridiculous score like, I think the record is like 450 something now. It used to be like less than 400. Um, and he also found that it's it's feasible to do the uh, sector X strats for the tasks in real time, which is you go left instead of right at the fork. And you there's actually like a warp for uh, sector X to sector Z, but uh, it's way easier to get a lot of points the other route, but he got so good at the, the distance of his charge shots that he was able to get so many more points. So he's a really cool, uh, interesting runner. And I'm glad that people are still like running this game somewhat. It, it's kind of died down because, I don't know, the competition kind of reached a certain point where it's just way too hard to improve. So yeah. There's actually uh, a glitch that, there's one more glitch that's gonna happen that I wanna show before I end this. But yeah. Um, I hope this, I, I do hope that this was a really good run to a lot of people. So. So this game has a really odd problem with the way it ranks scores. So I'm running this on the 1.0 cart, which is the cart that was packaged with the Rumble Pack. And that cart, you can actually do, uh, you can get a score over 511 on any planet. So somehow I got first on this cart. This is my best score supposedly, but I don't, I don't think so. So area six, I got 668, right? Well, that's just too high. That's just too high to handle. So it subtracts 256 from it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not, that's not it though, because, so second place is a higher score than first place. And then so is third. And then it goes down and then it, <laughs> So the way it ranks it is, it looks at the highest ranked score that it would beat and puts it above that and then subtracts. It doesn't care what happens after. <laughs> so so my, score, my scoreboard's just an incomprehensible mess. <laughs> and that's the end of it. Thank you, Zalad, for that amazing Star Fox 64 high score run. Uh, coming up next should be uh, Super Meat Boy, 80%, a race between iMystics and uh, Fortpole. Marshall's good about right now.
All right, just to let everyone know, we are going to shut down the stream for a brief moment. We will be right back. Don't go anywhere.